During the quiet spell in bird activity, my attention turned to something completely different. I became fascinated by the transient nature of these bubbles being produced by the waterfall in my miniature pond. I think we can all remember how as a child the fascination and excitement we got from producing masses of colourful bubbles just from a pot of bubble liquid and chasing after them and trying to pop them before they floated away. Here I am now years later, well many years later, again being fascinated by bubbles. But this time asking myself questions. What is a bubble? Why do they join together? And why are they only transient? A little bit of research into simple science reveals some of the answers and rules that govern the behaviour and life of bubbles. The first question that comes to mind is what actually is a bubble? A bubble is just a pocket of air surrounded by a thin layer of water sandwiched between two layers of salt molecules. Water is sticky, meaning its molecules are attracted to each other and want to stick close together. Salt molecules are polar and the water sticky end of these molecules line up and are attracted to the inner and outer surfaces of the water layer. The salt molecules tend to reduce the water's surface tension and its stickiness so that the water can spread out into the thin sheets that form the skin of the bubbles. As bubbles don't form in clean water and no soap's been added, there are probably some naturally occurring bipolymers in the water that can have the same effect as soap. A bubble floating freely in air takes on the shape of a perfect sphere. Because the internal pressure is higher than the external atmospheric pressure, this forces the bubble to expand, but the surface tension, acting like an elastic band, is trying to stop it expanding. When the two forces are balanced, the bubble becomes a stable, perfect sphere. This is also the shape that requires the least energy to maintain it. When a bubble is resting on water, the contact area is subject to a new and much larger force from the water and takes on the shape of a shallow saucer. As to why bubbles are attracted to each other and join forces, this can be explained by the meniscus effect, whereby the surface of the water is raised up around the edge of the bubble. This can clearly be seen around the edge of the large bubble below. You can also see this effect by looking at a small glass test tube containing water, whereby the surface of the water takes on a concave shape. This is caused by the fact that both soap and water, and also glass molecules, are polar and will attract and stick to each other. Because of the upward force from the water, bubbles always want to migrate to the highest point, which in this case is up the slope to another nearby bubble. The internal air pressure of a bubble depends on its size, the smaller the bubble, the higher the pressure is. So when two bubbles of the same size join together, they share a perfectly flat interface where they meet. But if a large and a small bubble join together, then the interface between them is bulged out into the larger bubble, as the internal pressure in the small bubble is always higher than in the larger one. And the small bubble will usually combine with the larger one, because the wall of the larger one is much weaker. So the large bubbles are not eating up the small ones, but the small bubbles are breaking into the large ones. You'll find that bubbles formed on a cold winter's day last much longer than those formed on a warm sunny day. Evaporation occurs naturally at the surface of water, where water is transformed into a gas or vapour. This process requires energy, 
which is more readily available as temperatures rise and so speeds up the rate of evaporation. The soap layer slows down this process, but evaporation continues to weaken the skin of the water until it finally pops, releasing all the energy that has been holding it together. The effect of this sudden energy release when the bubble bursts are clearly visible as the shock waves expand across the surface of the water.